mic check, one, two, one, two, mic check, mic check. There's Rocksteady at King of the Pit TV. I'll blow your head off there, people. Yeah, I got a microphone, innit? I got a microphone. Don't get too excited, all right? Makes me look professional, doesn't it? Makes me look professional. It doesn't actually work, or does it? Mm. Shout out to Gary, the man, the legend, via the Patreon. He says, you got to check out some Nine Inch Nails. Also wants me to check out uh, another record. I forgot what other record he's recommended. It'll come to me. It'll come to me. Sorry, he left me a link. It's like, you got to check this out. He also said uh, a lot of the playlists regarding this record might be a bit crap. Um, so... If you thank me for listening to Nine Inch Nails, redirect that thanking to Gary, who's put me onto this. I've been wanting to check out Nine Inch Nails for some time, but when I checked out their first record, it seemed as if... Now, correct me if I'm wrong, because it was a while back when I initially checked, but it seemed as if there were some longer songs, and I've got the mind of a goldfish. When I saw a few longer-length titles, I thought, fuck, you know what I mean? So, I've been trying to get into Man of War as well, but the first album, like, the first song's like 20 minutes long, and it's like, whoa... Whoa, I need to put some time in my calendar uh, to listen to a song that's crazy to me, man. It's, I don't have the time that I used to have back in the day, so I appreciate shorter songs. Um, Broken is an EP, supposedly, Wikipedia tells me. Although eight songs is debatable, you know, for an EP. Uh, do any of you music aficionados want to tell me the difference between an EP and an LP? Because I would assume eight tracks is LP worthy, right? Or is it the length? Because there's a long play and I don't know what you would consider this. I'd, I'd, call, I'd call it an extended play, but is it really? Maybe it's an extended play in relation to a single. And then we go into a long play. Hmm, maybe that's the case. You let me know. We've got eight tracks. Um, somebody left in the top of these comments, this is the perfect song to get you ready for music you'll never be ready for. That's incredible. Um, I forgot the name of the guy who's behind this band, or, you know, the front man. But he gets a lot of props as being, like, a superstar, right? Let's see if we can find his name quick before we start this. Because he gets ratings, doesn't he? Um, hmm. Well, you know what? I know before I can even find it, Trent Reznor is the guy, isn't it? Trent Reznor. I, I don't know what to expect. I know we're going to get into some industrial-esque stuff, but I don't know what degrees of extremity we will have in this band. It's going to be an incredible experience. This is, this is a, when I talk about music reaction videos, this is a real, honest, out-of-the-dark reaction. I have no clue whatsoever. Uh, what I'm expecting here. Mic check. Just got to keep it checking, people. You never know her. So we're swelling into what seems to be a single because it comes with a music video. Wish. We've got two music videos on this. Is this going to be metal? I don't know. Probably get an advertisement coming up. Ladies and gentlemen. Yep. Video play soon. Right, let's check the comments quick. Trent Reznor is the only person on the planet who has written an entire album about BDSM, R, self-deprecation and torch that had one of its own songs win a Grammy, blah de blah de blah de blah de blah Right. Let's find out what all the ranting and ravings about. Febreze bathroom liquid. At some point, at some point, at some point, if somebody wants to pay for my uh, YouTube premium, do it. <laughs> Punk rock beat there.
an interesting use of sounds here. Is it my cup of tea? As of so far, not necessarily. But I, so, I don't say that disrespectfully. Do you, know, do you know what's odd? It's 90s, but it feels like the undercurrent of this band is very 80s. Arguably 80s new romantic goth, top of the pops, pop music, essentially. The music video itself, the imagery, like the flamboyancy, the theatrical side of it, as well as the electronic, dense keyboard like synthesizer elements gives me a real um, 80s feel to it you know even though like the overt distortion that's incorporated in it is very 90s What label put this out? Interscope Records. Interscope. Interesting. Because the thing is, right, I always believe, like, when it comes to these mainstream maps, there's always an ulterior motive. Politically speaking, um, you know... I don't think these labels, these mainstream labels, sign artists purely based on the music. There has to be, of course, of course, money speaks, but there's also a direction and an influence. They arguably need these artists to possess, if not a direction, they need these artists to go um, to sort of sway public direction. I think there's a lot of social engineering that goes on with the music labels um i may call it conspiracy but to see a band like this getting grammys in the comments people are talking about the grammys and i i said 90s this this was actually 89 um supposedly copyrighted in 89 so um i take that back in regards to it being a 90s band and it's seeming 80s uh, i guess it's self-explanatory if it is literally from the 80s uh, but interscope records like top dog player, especially back then and in the 90s. Signing this band and then them getting a Grammy, which is incredible. And, you know, when it comes to stuff like that, it's nothing to do with talent. Not not being harsh on the band, but it's not to do with talent. It's all politics, isn't it? It's all industry. It's all entertainment and theatrics. It's None of it really is about the music. It's just about, you know what I mean, who's... Who's licking the ass of the CEO? Quite literally, let's be fair. Um, so this is very interesting to me. This is very interesting to me. Everyone's talking about Grammys. It goes to show how what it means to the people. You know these little trophies that get given to these. Uh, you know borderline, if not celebrities. Interesting. So this is good art, and I say that because we've already got a lot to talk about. We've already got a lot to talk about. Yo, before we, we, we get into a dialogue about CEOs and stuff like that, bruh, I'm a punk rocker dude. Like, I, I, it's, all, it's all in jest. That stuff definitely doesn't happen, does it? Indirectly, there's a little bit of Ramstein in there. I guess because they're both under the banner of industrial and I'm a complete noob when it comes to industrial music. I mean, when I was younger, the only like industrial stuff I had heard was uh, a little bit of Fear Factory. Uh, that was about it. I 
think it has a parallel with new metal perhaps. Right, let me give you my last opinion on that before we move on to the next one. Is it my cup of tea? It's not something I'd choose to listen to. But with that being said, I thought that was good. I thought that was good. That that's that that was a good sound. Um, without the grunts and the growls and the blast beats, it was an extreme sound. It was a very loud sound. Um, it was a very unique sound. It was a very, um, although flamboyant and a little bit forced, um, a very um, interesting and uh, thought-provoking like sense of dress and aesthetic the band had. I'm looking forward to see what the change of sound is going to be in this next one. We've got Last coming up next. <laughs> 